Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. You ever wonder what all those settings are in Media Encoder? This is Media Encoder Presets Demystified. All right, have to uh, send a shout out to Thad Peters and Mark over at Bake Like a Pro. Have you seen um, Bake Like a Pro on YouTube? <laughs> You'll be, uh, you'll be, uh, he makes cakes and bakes a bunch of stuff that's so freaking delicious. Oh, drive you crazy. Anyway, they both asked me, um, what are all the different settings in Media Encoder? I really can't find a good um, tutorial that breaks them all down. And, and that's usually because they're based on certain areas. Some are just for web, some are just for broadcast. So I'll take you through all of them and uh, what you would normally use those for. Let's take a look. So here is Media Encoder, which by the way, has a new uh, facelift where on the left hand side, we now have the media browser directly in Media Encoder 2017. You can drag and drop your clips directly from here into the project. You can output files directly from there, but we're really gonna be looking at this area down at the bottom. And that's the presets and groups. Here's a little tip that when you first open this up, there, there's usually a whole bunch that are open. If you hold the Alt key down option on Mac and close it uh, and then open it, it will just open into the smaller areas. We're gonna go from bottom to top. So down to the bottom, here's your typical ones. This is what I use for my show, YouTube presets. And you can see they're based on typical uh, HD and SD presets all the way up to um, the uh, UHD setting. And if you mouse over, you get a tool tip gives you a little bit more information about that. And the Vimeo settings, also the same thing. Just to let you know, the YouTube and Vimeo settings were created by engineers at YouTube and Vimeo, so they're the right settings. They're, sometimes people get too anal about, what's the exact setting in Premiere Pro? Just use the damn presets. They're perfect. And they don't re-encode when you upload them. Okay, Twitter. Here's um, you know some typical ones, a 720 HD and a little bit uh, smaller square version, 640 square. Facebook versions, very simple. That's what you'd use those for. DZ, DC fast, DG fast channel um, is in the web section, but it's also uh, in another section over here. So those are the web ones. The other, you can just bypass this. On Windows, it's Windows Media. I'm not gonna output anything Windows Media. I'm, I'm going out to different formats, but that's where they are in the other section. Now the image section does have some important settings for people that are working with images. And the big ones here are Open EXR and DPX. Just if you don't come from the world of, of uh, high-end visual effects, uh, feature films, then you probably don't know about those or you wouldn't use those formats. But uh, DPX and Open EXR are still images. They're a full frame of every single pixel. They're very big files. And if a visual effects uh, um, artist is working on a visual effects, they don't want to work on something from a DSLR or something compressed or even something ProRes. They want to work on the biggest, uh, juiciest files with the most information. It's more like a real film uh, frame. It's a full frame, no compression, full size, and o open EXR up to 32-bit floating point. So we're talking gigabytes, if not terabytes of, of file size working with them. I'm not going to work with them. Um, I'll show you what I'd use if I am using an intermediate codec. And of course, there's other formats. Some of these might not be available um, on the Mac. Uh, the, the GIF format that uh, Adobe uses in exporting is built into Windows. That's where it comes from. You can send out a whole bunch of JPEGs in a sequence. You'll also notice that the words match source here quite a bit. And this is really a default for a lot of these settings. Um, unless you want to get it to a, to a specific frame size and, and frame rate, the idea behind this is Premiere Pro and Media Encoder are going to say, we're going to keep whatever your frame size, frame rate, keep as much of that as possible. That's the, uh, the source format that it's matching. It's just going to spit out a bunch of still images or different formats as we'll see in a minute. So match the source, but just give me a new format, okay? And as I was showing you the open EXR ones down here, and you can see, again, they're match source, they're uncompressed, 
and depending on the size, there's 32-bit floating point. And you can right-click on any of these and choose preset settings, and you can update these if you want. So I could come in here and, and change any of these settings. Right now, this match source is, is on, and when you click that, it turns um, all of these off. But if you... If you turn these off, then you're able to edit them on the left-hand side. And of course, you could you'd have to save a copy down here and save a new uh, preset. But that's the idea uh, behind that. The other one that that is used quite a bit is Targa and uh, TIFF sequences are used again mostly for uh, high-end broadcast. Targa was like the standard for a long time. So those are the image sequence formats. Down in the Blu-ray and DVD, these are all the typical Blu-ray and DVD settings that you would normally use. One little tip about bur burning discs is it, it makes more sense to encode a file and then burn the disc rather than encode and burn. A lot of times when you wreck a disc, when you make a coaster as people will call it, it's because the encoding was interrupted while the disc was being written and burned. Um, so that if you separate those two jobs, burn this out, make a file, and then uh, burn it to disk, it's much easier. And if you're using Encore uh, in, from CS6, which by the way, you can still use Encore CS6 with Creative Cloud and, and make DVDs and, and Blu-ray, you can actually burn an ISO. So you burn an actual disk image, it's done, it's finished, it works, then you burn the media. So all the typical formats in here. If you went and started messing around with these, these formats and tried to build a disk, you're almost guaranteed to break the disk. Those formats are based on industry standards for DVD and Blu-ray. And DVD and Blu-ray have to have a certain format. Uh, if you screw that format up, you're either going to make the disc unplayable on a, on a player or it's, it's, uh, got, it's asking for so much data that the, the player can't keep up. So they're very specific formats. And then, of course, you've got wonderful devices down here. Everything from TiVo to the Kindle, but the, the big ones uh, are... Android settings and uh, Apple settings. Quite frankly, looking at some of these settings, I don't really see a lot of uh, new modern settings down in here. Uh, my Galaxy S5 shoots 4K and I don't see any of that in there, but um, of course I could choose one of those formats. They're all H.264 and then enlarge the frame size. Now, cinema. This is digital cinema packages for the Raptor format. Right? These are digital cinema packages and if I drag this over here and drop it on here, I'm now going to be outputting a Raptor DCP, a digital cinema package. And, and if we open this up, you'll see there's not a lot of settings in here that you can change. Um, you're basically just setting the uh, file dimensions and whether it's 25 frames per second PAL or 24 uh, frames. And it's 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 meant to be a very simple format. So by default, this is 2K only. This is a licensed version of the Raptor DCP format inside Premiere Pro. So you just basically make your 2K file, drop that on and output, take that to a theater and it plays. There's a 4K version that you do have to license that I'll have a separate tutorial on outputting DCP packages. All right, so that's in the cinema section. In the camera section, there's a bunch of different formats, including HDV formats, and you can see they're MPEG-2, and they also have a different aspect ratio, so you can see that this is 1440 by 1080. You're still going to output a 1920 by 1080. It's just the pixels are not square on these cameras, on these HDV cameras. And then you can get up to uh, AVC Intra. And again, these are, are slightly different. You can see that one pixel aspect ratio is the same, 1440, and this one's 1920. Uh, and it says P2 format. The P2 format is a Panasonic format. It It's a, um, a, co a, it's a folder, a directory with a bunch of stuff in it. And when you take any video, I could take you know, a video from my Black Magic or Canon 5D Mark III, I could make th make it a P2 file, take the contents, the whole folder, and put it on a P2 card, and it now lives in a Panasonic environment. Some people need to make these files back and, and put them in a Panasonic environment. That's what that camera uh, 
category is for. And in the broadcast format, there's quite a few in here and you know they're they're labeled accordingly. So if you mouse over uh, this section, you'll hear you'll see a comment: uh, high definition DPP AS11 MXF with version 1.1 shim for UK broadcast. Uh, this new AS10 and AS11 formats are new broadcast formats. We wouldn't use them on YouTube, on the web at all. They're strictly for broadcast. A very, very big part of Premiere Pro's life exists in the broadcast world all around the world. And that's why you'll see quite a few formats in here because people will play back different formats depending on uh, you know what they use at, at their station or in their organization. So lots of different formats in here. And this is where QuickTime is. And you can see by default, QuickTime says rewrap. So when I drag this and replace this, I'm now gonna rewrap this in a .mov format. This was added because some people will only accept the file with a .mov format, even if it's an MP4 already or an MXF or what. It, they just want a .mov and that's called rewrapping. That's something QuickTime has done forever. So in this example here, you rewrap it uh, to an MOV format. There's AVC long GOP formats. Again, these are all broadcast type formats that we wouldn't use uh, anywhere else. HEVC, uh, H.265 uh, H format. And you can see these are going all the way up to 8K, so we could take that ARRI up to 8K. Oh, and this is where we get a warning. The HEVC codec must be installed to use this feature. Clicking OK will install, enable this codec for immediate use. Click OK, and it's installing. This is part of Premiere Pro that does get installed when you use it. So that codec is sitting there and, and it's not installed yet until you ask for it, then Premiere Pro will install it. You'll also see that when you're outputting Dolby and Dolby Plus audio formats. Um, you'll, you'll pick Dolby and it will ask you to uh, load that format. Um, okay, so those are the broadcast settings and then we've got audio settings in here. And then if you wanted to, you could click in here and create a new encoding preset and it could be based on any of these formats. You can set video, audio, multiplexer, captions, and where that publishes. So to at that, and Mark, I just wanted to, to answer you back that hey, we just went through every single one of those features. We're never going to use all of them. The broadcast folks are going to stay primarily in the broadcast and maybe they'll dabble in the web for approval, smaller versions. Um, image sequence stuff, definitely going to go to the high-end visual effects guys. Oh, I wanted to mention that uh, what I use for an intermediate and that's Cineform. So if you just type in Cineform down here, these are the formats that I use if I have to output something and reuse it somewhere else. So maybe this is uh, like a show opening where you don't want to have the the weight of, a, of and the processing of a uh, of an After Effects file. You can output it as a, tw a 12-bit Cineform with an alpha channel. So it actually has transparency and now it's not in After Effects anymore. It plays as fast as any video. GoPro Cineform, don't think of GoPro the camera, it's GoPro the company, and Cineform is the codec. Cineform used to be a separate company and GoPro bought that. It's an excellent intermediate format, works on both Mac and Windows. If I have to render something and reuse it, I'll be using Cineform 10-bit or 12-bit, and if it has an alpha channel, then I'll use the 12-bit with alpha. All right. Now you guys know what all these settings are for. Whew, there's lots in here um, and you can export and import uh, settings and uh, customize it any way you want. Hopefully you found this informative. If you're new to Video Reveal, take a moment and subscribe. If you want to take your, your support up a notch, join us over on Patreon for as little as $1 a month. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith and it's my job to get you 